Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed about link budget analysis. So I made a small mistake or a typo in one of the in the equations that I mentioned here that I have written here. So this mistake is in the path loss expression. The expression for path loss is actually lambda by four pi r square. Four pi r the whole square. Okay, there is this is not two. This is in fact four. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to make that correction. And uh, I'll in fact change the slides. So refer to the slides. Probably, definitely, I'll change these slides probably in a in a day's time. Uh, before your quiz or exams, the slides should be hundred percent updated. Okay. So if there are any few typos, I'll check everything and update it. So it is actually lambda by four pi r. So that was the only mistake that I'd made. I uh, I'm sorry. I think um, so when I was just writing it down once, and then I didn't refer to the any textbook. So I was just using it from memory, and I missed out. Factor two, okay. So everything else remains the same. The factor of two, it's it's four instead of two. So this is the only change. I'll rewrite these equations and upload the re-upload the slides again. Now uh, I wanted to discuss a few problems uh, which I discussed in the last lecture in the classroom itself. But I thought I'll discuss it again here once. So the problem goes like this. So you have uh, a message m of t. Which is a narrow band message, which whose bandwidth is b. Okay, this is the positive frequency two b. In fact, the positive frequency bandwidth is two b. Okay, uh, it turns out there is a narrow band detector available to an eavesdropper. So, an eavesdropper is someone who can actually listen to your signal. So, all you need to do is you just need a very narrow band receiver. They know the bandwidth of the signal, so they'll think if I spread this signal over, I mean, if I have the band pass filter of bandwidth two b. They just need to keep sweeping this. Uh, sorry, this is some carrier frequency, minus b and plus b, fc plus b and fc minus b. Okay, your data bandwidth is just two b. So all I need to do is I need to sweep this bandpass filter over a certain range of frequencies. At some point, I'm going to receive a signal. Okay, so this is called a narrow band detector. So I'm using a narrow base narrow band filter. Just randomly, like a radio, we keep tuning it, and suddenly you receive a signal. You know there is a signal there, and okay, then you start, you know, uh, fixing the bandpass filter to that center and keep receiving the message signal. So the problem is, uh, even though the, I mean, because your carrier frequencies are going to be a fixed set of values, you can sweep it and find out which is that value. So this was the problem. So if I directly do a DSBSC, so I'm going to directly multiply this onto impress this signal onto a carrier. Do a direct amplitude modulation. The problem was that the eavesdropper could receive it. He had a in his hands. He had a in his possession. He had a an narrow band detector, which could detect signals in a very narrow band, which is around two frequencies. And he could sweep this frequency and find out the carrier frequency and somehow then uh, eavesdrop the message. The goal is the receiver. What they did was that they had to come up with a plan to avoid this. So what they did was is in, instead of fixing the frequency. They transmitted the frequency as a variable, so it will actually be two pi a k into t. In fact, uh, not a k. Your frequency will be. Uh, it's a variable frequency. I'll write it as f of t d into t. Okay. So what they did was your frequency could alter between two values f one and f two, and that is determined by a sequence a k. So if your a k is one, you choose f one plus one minus a k. If a k is zero, you will choose f two. So your instantaneous frequency at any given time was given by this equation. Okay, so uh, a k keeps changing with time; it changes at every at at a certain symbol rate t. Okay, now what they did was that instead of having a fixed carrier frequency, you keep changing the carrier frequency at a certain time interval t. Then what would happen is that your message signal, the total power. In this message signal remains the same, but since you are spreading it over a wider range of frequencies, the carrier is now spread over a wider range of frequencies. The message signal will also be spread like this. The carrier power is going to be the signal power is now going to be spread over a wider range of frequencies. When I say wider range, it will be around f one and f two. Okay, it's given that because you know if you if you when you, when you are going to do frequency modulation. You are uh, depends on actually this. This may not uniformly spread around f one and f two. It may be spreading depending on the coding uh, sequence spreading sequence a k. The signal spectrum will look slightly different. I mean, it will be it will actually be looking like this. Uh, there will be a dip in between. Okay, so the spectrum will look some. I mean, we don't have to go into the details. All I'm trying to say is your frequency is now spread. 
So to a narrow band detector who is going to look for a narrow range of frequencies, high energy narrow, high energy within a small band of frequencies, it's going to look for that. It will never detect any visible signal. The problem is how am I going to receive it? The question says that AK is a perfectly random sequence. If AK is perfectly random, you can never reproduce a perfectly random source. Meaning, the, the probabilities of getting zeros and ones, I mean, you can never say what the next sequence is going to be if you know the previous value, okay? Or the current value, you cannot predict the next value. So, that's the problem of uh, perfectly random source. So, the receiver, normally what we do is, when we say that, you know, there is coded communications, the receiver, the transmitter knows the code, you know, you actually, you are aware of what you are transmitting, the code AK. Okay, so that's why those sequences which we generate, they are all called artificially generated, they are called pseudo random codes. They are not really random, but they are they, they have a pattern and that pattern is only known to the repeat after some time the pattern they, they start repeating it. But that pattern is only known to the transmitter and receiver. So such codes are called pseudo random codes. Those codes are replicable. And uh, this technique of, you know, using different carrier frequencies, it's called uh, frequency hopped spread spectrum by using frequency two different carriers, hopping between two different carriers, you are spreading the spectrum of the signal. So that's why it's called FHSS, Frequency Hopped spec Spectrum uh, Signaling. Now by doing this, usually in Frequency Hopped spec Spectrum, the AK is a known sequence. So once your receiver knows what is AK, he will know what was the carrier frequency which was transmitted. Okay, He will know at what different times what carrier frequency was transmitted. So based on that, he can easily recover. Again, the recovery is pretty simple. Uh, the question also says, he has the receiver has a diode detector with him in hand and he has to use only a diode and a diode detector this diode detector will work only if your carrier signal is carrier center frequency is constant okay here i'm assuming the message has a fixed dc so a diode detector will work you know so something like this a message can be expressed or wherein a diode detector can be used for demodulation okay and um, this is an assumption we are making now if I want to use a diode detector, I need to ensure that the message signal has a finite DC content. Otherwise, it won't work. You know, we've discussed why it doesn't work in the previous lectures. Now, the thing is, we need a constant carrier frequency at the input of the diode detector for this circuit to work. So, what am I, how am I going to build? So, the receiver and transmitter just needs to know two informations. What are the two frequencies, F1 and F2? Now, the signal is either going to be M of t into cos 2 pi F1t or it's going to be m of t into cos 2 pi f 2 t depending on the sequence for some time it's going to be this some time it's going to be this so at the receiver i need to multiply it with some function with some carrier frequency if i if i let's say i multiply it with f1 alone the output frequency carrier at the output and pass it through some filters and all that the output carrier frequency will here will keep varying i don't want that i want it to have a fixed carrier only then i can use a diode detector receiver so how do i do that is Instead of multiplying it with a fixed carrier, I'll multiply it with average F1 plus F2 by 2 into T. Okay. Now, let's see what happens when I give cos of 2 pi F1T as an input to this. If I feed it, I'm going to get two frequencies because the sum and product of the two frequencies you will get. The, the, the difference, sorry, the sum and difference of the two frequencies you will get. The difference is F1 minus F2 by 2 into T. This is one component you will get. The other component is going to be the sum of the two, which will be cos of 3 F1 plus F2 by 2 into T. So, this is a higher frequency, so I can put a low pass filter and remove this. So, I'll be getting only F1 minus F2 at the output here. So, the signal I'll be receiving here will be M of T into cos of 2 pi into F1 minus F2 by 2 into T. Now, let's see what happens if I actually feed, let's say I'm using uh, the carrier frequency suddenly change to F2 T. Then I am going to multiply it with the same signal, cos of 2 pi F1 plus F2 t. So again, I will get some one difference. So F2 minus this, F2 plus this quantity. F2 minus F1 plus F2 by 2, F2 plus F1 plus F2 by 2. So you are going to get cos of 2 pi F2 minus F1 by 2 into t and uh, plus cos of 2 pi into 3 F2 plus F1 by 2 into t. So, I will remove this component. If I remove this component, if you look at it, even if I feed cos 2 pi F2 t, the carrier frequency is going to be just F2 minus Fn. I mean, you should remember that cos of minus x is equal to cos of x. It is an even function. So, because of that, I can say this is again same as 
cos of 2 pi into f1 minus f2 by 2 into t. So, I am receiving the same carrier frequency whether I feed f2 or whether I feed f1. So, the carrier frequency is fixed. So, the received signal is going to be m of t into cos 2 pi into f1 minus f2 by 2 into t. Now, this I can feed it to a diode detector. So, that for the diode detector to work, the only condition is the carrier frequency here. Whatever this new carrier frequency, I will call it F, Fc dash, should be much greater than the bandwidth of your message signal. This condition has to be satisfied. Okay, Only then the diode, diode detector circuit will easily work. And that condition is already given in the question itself. If you if you look at the question here, it is mentioned here clearly. So, it is it's mentioned here clearly that the difference between the two frequencies is much greater than 2b. So, that is why I had given that condition. Okay, So, this is just a fun problem just to think like a puzzle. So, uh, it is one application of FSK. You can see it like an FSK frequency shift key. I am just changing the frequency. But the only difference is that there is no information in the, it is a purely random sequence. So, there is really no information in it. Okay, The message is still conveyed in the amplitude. But I am just changing the carrier frequency. This is called frequency hopped spec spectrum. The technique itself and it was invented as I said in the class itself by Hedy Lamar, one of the Hollywood actresses. She had invented this. She was a co-inventor. She invented it along with the musician. Yeah. Now, the other point uh, which I wanted to stress a bit uh, in this lecture is about quadrature amplitude modulation. So, as I said, this is the most commonly used modulation scheme or uh, for especially when you have four levels. So, when we call it four quam, okay, uh, we often use the word called QPSK, quadrature phase shift keying. Okay. Uh, quadrature, when I, when I do not write four in between, I just simply said quam or QPSK, it usually means four levels. So, what I am going to do here is, I will take cos omega c t and then I will take sin omega c t. I discussed in the last class, you will normally have a bit stream. Let us say you have a bit stream 1 0 1 0 some bit stream coming as an incoming bit stream, you will split it into two halves. So, now you have to understand the bit for example, the duration of the bit say is t b and uh, it will be 1 for some time and 0 for some time and then it is 1. Now, when you strip the sequence, into two parts, what will happen is you are going to make this as say this is 1 0 1 0 and say it is 0 for another sequence and then it is 1 here. So, 0 0 1. So, I will take out all the even odd numbers first. So, 1 so I will I will have to repeat the 1 for 2 cycles 1 and again this is 1 here repeated for 2 cycles. Now, again it is 0 repeated for 2 cycles. So, if you see the data rate here the, I mean the speed which is the symbols are coming uh, the, the bit rate here is T b the bit rate here will be 2 TB. So, the bandwidth for this will be lower okay, for this signal. And I am just reducing this high frequency signal, high bit rate signal into two low bit rate, half the bit rates signals. So, the other stream will be, it will start from here and uh, this will be called uh, 0 and you have to make it 0 for 2 cycles. Okay, And uh, uh, sorry, this will remain as 0 for 2 cycles. And again, uh, at this cycle again it will remain as 0 for 2 cycles and finally it is going to go 1, 1 for 2 more cycles. So, here it is 0 for 2 cycles uh, when I say 2 cycle this is the duration for 2 cycles and then again it is going to remain 0 for 2 cycles. So, this is 0 to 2 TB. Okay. So, what you do is you just take a stream of 1s and zeros coming to your serial data and you split it into two, 2 parts Okay, this odd and even and multiply it with cos here and multiply this data with sin here. What you get here, it is called the quadrature PSK, QPSK modulation or even sometimes simply called as quadrature amplitude modulation. Okay. So, if I take for example, uh, I can actually map bit 0 to a symbol plus a and bit 1 to sorry bit 1 to plus a and bit 0 to minus a. So, then what I will be receiving is plus minus a cos omega c t plus minus a sin omega c t depending on the two sequences. So, this is this this is controlled by a 1 bit sequence let us call it a 0 and this is controlled by a 1 bit sequence or a k I will call it a k and this is by a 1 bit sequence b k. Now, together this is a 2 bit sequence. So, there are 4 possible combinations. So, again uh, the signal space diagram for carrier frequency I mean um, RF frequencies is referred to as constellation diagram. So, the x axis is going to be cos omega c t, y axis is going to be sin omega c t. So, this will be your constellation diagram. 
if I assume that plus a plus a is transmitted or if I assume 0 0 that will be equivalent to minus a minus a so cos and sin are negative so you should take the cos axis multiply by minus a sin axis uh, sorry for sin axis you have to find the amplitude which is minus a here then the point is going to be this is going to be your constellation point so this will be your 0 comma 0 I am just doing a blind assignment here so 0 comma 1 it is going to be minus a comma a so cos will be minus sin will be positive plus so this will be your other constellation point ok so similarly 1 comma 1 so 1 comma 1 both are positive your constellation point is going to be somewhere here so this is a and 1 comma minus 1 is going to be here so these are the four constellation points ok uh, you can also see this as a quadrature phase shift keying ok there are four phases of a cosine which I am varying ok uh, in fact if you take this signal based on the bit sequence you are modulating the carrier you can very easily represent this as uh, a cos omega ct plus phi k now your phi k takes on four values pi by 4 3 pi by 4 5 pi by 4 and 7 pi by 4 okay so based on the two bit sequence a k b k based on the two bit sequence values i can map it to four different phases okay so i'll get four different constellation point and this is the same the amplitude is constant so if you see all these points lie on a circle so because your amplitude is constant um, the all these points lie on a circle okay so this is uh, called constellation diagrams and when I say high density qualms what we normally do is we will uh, as, as I uh, let me just complete one more point I, I said all these things but since there were too many things in last lecture I thought I will just stress again stress few points again. So if I have a serial data coming to you ones and zeros you just trip into two paths uh, one path here and other path here odd path and even path I called it. So this path which you are going to multiply it with a cost signal cos omega ct so this path is what you call i path or in phase path ok or i channel it is often referred to as i channel i path or the in phase path then similarly you are going to multiply the other path you, the, when, when, you are, when you are going to split it into two paths you are going to multiply it with a quadrature carrier so it is called q path or q channel then you take both the signals or either add or subtract it you are going to shift the I mean this is anyways a low frequency data this bit stream which is coming to you is a low frequency bit stream when you multiply it with these carriers you are actually going to generate a high frequency carrier signal ok the RF signal at the receiver I told you you should do the exact operation so you will have to multiply it with cos omega ct and take the same bit stream multiply it with cos omega ct and sin omega ct so whatever was multiplied what whatever was signal which was carried on the sine wave part of it will will be rejected here so here you will get you will, you will only get so if i call this sequence as ak and bk here you are going to get the sequence ak here and the sequence bk here of course i'm going to put a low pass filter and all that so after that i'm going to get ak and bk here okay so this is called i channel and this is called q channel so i and q data you know sometimes i data and q data these are the common words that you will see we'll be using later I will simply say i data and q data it is referred to this ok. So, uh, it is a very common thing so generally uh, let me just why I am stressing on this i and q I will just expl explain it again. So, for example, let us say I am going to do uh, phase modulation so digital phase modulation so let us say I have a carrier frequency and I am going to multiply it with some phi k. So, this phi k your phase is going to change phase or it can be even frequency it is going to change based on a bit sequence. Now, if I want to practically realize this, how am I going to realize this? So, previously I told you quadrature amplitude modulation was trivial to realize. You just have to take the bits, split, uh, split them into two streams and multiply it by the carrier frequency. What you get here is your quadrature amplitude modulated waveform, QAM waveform. I also called it QPSK, okay, because your amplitude of the carrier, you can see that as a single carrier with different phases. So, quadrature phases, uh, four phases and we also call, can call it as QPSK. Now, I am trying to say I am stressing this word I have introduced two words which is I channel and Q channel I and Q why is that because if let us say you take a phase modulated digital signal a digital sorry a, a digitally phase modulated carrier frequency ok which means your phase can change only in certain steps. Now this I can express it as cos phi k into cos 2 pi fc minus sin phi k into 
sin 2 pi of ct. So, to implement this what I need to do ok, what I need to do is that first you will have some digital data coming to you 1 zeros and all that. So, that you will convert it into a phase information phi k, you can multiply it by 2 pi somehow you can con convert it into some phase information. Then you have to take cos of that data, digital data. Then you will have to take sin of that digital data. Then multiply it with cos omega c t here and uh, sin omega c t here. Okay. Then by adding or subtracting you can appropriately, so in this case it will be plus and minus to get cos of what, what you are going to transmit here omega c t f t cos omega c t plus phi of k is going to be a real signal. So, now if you see even a frequency modulated or phase modulated signal not only just amplitude modulated signal, even a frequency and phase modulated signal can be reduced in the in a format which is very similar to this I will call it as I path, this I will call it Q path similar to I and Q transmitter. Okay, I am, I am taking the in phase part and multiplying with the cos, quadrature part and multiplying with the quadrature carrier which is sin. Okay. So, that is the reason why we use this i and q term. So, if you see even today's times, even if you see a frequency modulation based receivers, transmitters, you will still use the word i and q for this reason because the most of the implementation blocks look like this. Okay. So, that is why the term i and q is very important. Now, high density qualm usually refers to, uh, so for example, uh, we discussed in the last class that if I take a signal cos and uh, sin omega ct on either sides. Okay. Instead of varying the amplitude by just two levels, what I showed you was a binary, uh, see I am just using one bit sequence to control the amplitude of cos and one bit sequence to control the amplitude of sin. Instead, let us say I use two bit sequence to control this. So, there are four possible levels here, two bit sequence to control the amplitude of sin wave, then there are four possible values. So, let us say the four possible values are minus 3a, minus a, plus a, and plus 3a. Now, the way I chose this value is such that the space between the 2 is 2a. The difference in space is constant. Okay. So, now if you see it is going to be a 3a minus a minus 3a and similarly minus a or similarly a 3a minus a minus 3a. So, your constellation points are going to be a comma a depending on different values. So, you will actually have 16 possible constellation points. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 on each quadrant. So, you know I am just joining these two points here. So, if I for different amplitudes you are, you are varying your cos and sin, you will actually have 4 points in each quadrant. Okay. So, this is called as 16 quam. Okay. Now, your I channel and Q channel will be 2 bit data. So, I mean this is again very easily generated. Let us say you have a bit stream coming to you, serial bit stream 1s and zeros. You can group them as 4 4 bits and you can transmit 2 bits here and 2 bits here. Okay. So, these 2 bits will independently control the amplitudes of the carriers both sine and cos. So, that is why it is called uh, quadrature amplitude modulation. You are modulating the amplitudes of the quadrature carriers okay, in quadrature with each other. And the advantage of this is that you can reduce the data rate. I mean we already discussed what is the advantage of going for quadrature modulation is that we can save bandwidth. That is one of the main reasons for going. So, here it, if you look at it, it looks like I am transmitting two separate data streams in the same bandwidth, in the same frequency band. Okay. So, that is that is the main advantage of a quadrature amplitude modulation. The slight disadvantage is generating this very accurate quadrature carriers at especially at high frequencies it is very challenging to generate accurate quadrature carriers. So, this will be cos omega ct plus phi sin omega ct and if there is a slight error here your constellation points are going to be little off. Okay. So, that probably I will give a, a tutorial problem or an example problem for you guys to solve and understand it yourself. It is pretty simple thing to think about it. Okay. So, uh, that is all about uh, uh, wireless the, the basic passband communication systems. Okay. And uh, as I said, you know, I just uh, it, it, it was supposed to be completed in the last lecture itself, but I felt few points here and there that might have not covered it so well. So I just wanted to make one lecture on it, a very small lecture on it. Okay, uh, so that is it. And similarly, you can extend the same ideas of decision regions at the receiver. So if once you receive, you will be uh, if you multiply it by cos and sine at the receiver, what you are going to receive is going to be the constellation points. So 
if you are asked to find the uh, okay so what you are going to receive will be the constellation points so i haven't given the scales and all that shown it properly here but uh, what you need to do is if let's say i i have always said that if i want to find uh, probability of error decision reasons for this divide them draw a line in between the two points like this and uh, draw a line in between like this so between these two points i drew a line like this between these two points i drew a line like this so that's how i get this so each one of them happens to be the decision region for these constellation points so if your constellation point lies within this region then you will say this is the data which was transmitted i mean it, it it's my some four bit it, it may be 0000 or you know depending on whatever the values it it can be something i might have assigned uh, 16 possible bit combinations to that one constellation point okay so the decision region this is a two dimensional constellation and this is very very commonly used today most of the especially fourth generation and the fifth generation and even in wi-fi we have moved to higher density quadrature amplitude modulation schemes okay previously we started from diff very different modulation schemes again i'll revisit modulation schemes for wireless communications in great detail later part of the course so this is all to lay down the foundations for students uh, who probably as in to refresh your memory on communication systems okay so i'll next lecture i'm definitely going to start with uh, wireless